Hey there, it's your boy Joe. We're back here in the shop working on this Trotter mag wheel. Uh, this is one of the T2s, the T1000s, and it has a faulty power button on it. So today we're going to be showing you how to change that out. So first we're going to start off by taking all these screws off and removing the, the pad. You always remember that you want to use good downward pressure and a P1 Phillips bit. Make sure you don't strip these out when you're removing or installing. Next step is going to be to remove these three screws for this trim piece. These three screws here are next. Uh, you can use your P1, but they are actually a P2, so I prefer to swap it just to not strip these ones. And then lastly, to remove this nose piece, we're going to take out the four screws right here, here, and here. So these screws are a little bit longer. Make sure you screw them all the way out, flip it and tap them out, and save them so you don't lose them. All right, then the next step is to tap this off gently. Uh, this works, got a nice flat edge. Because we've already got most of this off, we're going to remove this top piece in order to access the clip for the power button to replace it. So I could have easily removed all these screws earlier when I was doing that. Now because these are sealed with silicone, you might need something to pry it. My favorite tool, as usual, is a butter knife. Just to kind of break the seal. Make sure you're not sticking it in too far and messing with the wires. And here we are. So the next step is gonna to be to trace that power button. right here I'm gonna remove the glue in here and unscrew this nut. So we're gonna use a pair of needle nose to do this. going to replace it with a working power button. Stop. 
this is our old power button I want this part this thing is pretty much garbage it doesn't it barely works heat shrink tubing which could have definitely put that on before I split the ends would have been a little easier but so I got some of this soldering paste and this stuff is amazing for circuit boards and for stuff like this because it will shrink itself into the metal and pretty much avoid everything else. Goes on like a nice pace. Turn on our heat gun. Ta-da! Reinserting. Beautiful. Go ahead and do this to help seal it for, also to hold it in place and to help seal a little better for water. And while we're at it, we're gonna add a little bit around these too. And you can see this hot glue that they use originally at the factory is kind of garbage. All right. Next step, thread it through. So because we took this apart, we're gonna add silicone back. And I'm also gonna add some extra along here, especially for these holes. Make sure that your LEDs are lined up in the center LED with that center hole so that this slides on nicely.
Next step, obviously going to be hooking up our power button. Making sure all of our wires are down in there, nothing's gonna get pinched. Line up the circuit board. And we are in. So I generally like to put these four screws in first because it'll help draw that right up where it goes. Uh, you're gonna wanna start with a very low torque setting. That'll help keep you from cross threading or stripping it. If it starts ratcheting, back off and try again. I also sometimes like to go reverse first, help line it up. I can see it moving in. And it didn't quite draw it all the way, so I'm going to turn my torque up just a little. There we are. Especially with these deeper ones, sometimes it takes a second to catch the hole. As long as you got it on a nice low torque setting, you're not going to strip it. I see what our problem is. Mm. And that's what I get for not paying attention to the bottom. Let this be a lesson. Trusty butter knife. There we are. There we are. Now we are incorrectly. That was why I was having an issue with misaligned. Now that they're all in, a couple of clicks up. Now we're on to these three. Again, nice low torque setting. Downward pressure. Uh, when you're putting this base plate back on, just re remember the holes that are countersunk are the ones that the screws that go in before the pad. Those little spacers are irrelevant to this particular project, by the way. Again, with this lowest torque setting possible, they don't need to be snug down super tight or torqued down tight, they just need to be snug. Such a satisfying feeling to see the silicone squish out as you snug these. Power button's working great. All we have to do now Clean this up a little bit, put the pad back on, screw it down, and we're done. Okay, thanks for joining me in the shop today. Hopefully that helps if you're ever trying to work on this board with that specific problem. You're releasing a whole string of repair videos, as well as ride videos and more. So make sure you like and subscribe, and stay tuned. Thanks.